So you receive notice that it's time for you to do your interview at either the embassy or here in the United States at a local service center. What can you do in preparation for said interview? Let's talk about that today in this video. I'm attorney Jonathan Mendoza and for years I have helped people with their immigration and criminal defense matters. So you receive that notice in the mail. Now, as I mentioned, there's different types of interviews. There's the ones abroad and there's ones here in the United States. For purposes of this video, I'm gonna talk about those that have their interviews here in the US. So number one, make sure you review the applications that were filed with immigration. If you had an attorney ask for a copy, the attorney should be providing you a copy anyways in preparation. If you did it on your own, or if you had somebody else help you, get a copy of that application or, or the various applications that you submitted and review them with you and your spouse, for example, or you and your parent, or you and your child who filed it for you. Make sure you know the answers. Some immigration officers are very detailed. They will go page by page, section by section, asking you these questions. So it's important that you know the addresses, the dates, uh, names, anything that's relevant in those applications that you submitted. You wanna be prepared. Both parties need to know um, the answers to common questions, which can be as simple as, where have you lived in the last five years? Where have you worked in the last five years? And what are the dates? What are the, na the names of your children? What are the date of births for all of them? All that information is important. Number two, bring an interpreter if necessary. If you don't speak English, oftentimes the immigration officer is going to want somebody to interpret in the language that you need. Um, now, here's a caveat. Not every service center requires an interpreter. In some instances, the officer may know the language. Let's say Spanish is a very common language that a lot of USCIS officers know. Um, and so they'll have the interview in both English and Spanish, and you can save yourself that trouble. In other situations, the service center may have uh, interpreters available there at the scene or there at the location. So uh, I tell you that you should have an interpreter if, for example, you don't know English well enough, but there may, may be situations where, in fact, you don't need it. Better to be safe than sorry. Um, that's why I always tell people, ask a friend or family, someone that's not necessarily going to be uh, charge you for their, for their services, but rather do you a favor. Number three, bring all original documents that were submitted. So I know that you submitted copies of them with your application, but uh, the officer is gonna wanna see the originals, birth certificates, marriage certificate, any divorce decrees, uh, criminal records, all those need to be original documents and if relevant, certified by the court if there are court documents. What is also a good idea to do is bring updated tax returns. So let's say, for example, you submitted your application, uh, a whole year has gone by, and now you've, recent, you've refiled the most recent uh, tax returns. Bring a copy with you in case the officer needs it, you have it ready to go. What you don't want to do is have to cause a delay in your application because the officer wants you to give him or her those records. So be prepared, bring your originals, bring updated tax returns if relevant. And number four, just tell the truth. And by telling the truth also means don't make any omissions. Very often people say this happened years ago um, and there's no record of it. Okay, but what if immigration does an investigation? And this possibility that if you don't say, if you purposely deny something or don't omit something, it's going to come back and haunt you. So you want to have those conversations with the attorney uh, before you file a case to determine whether there's any red flags in your case that you should be in lookout for. But uh, if you happen to do it on your own, uh, be cautious because that, let's say that criminal history that happened 20 years ago that no, doesn't show up in your live scan report. Uh, Immigration may still have that information. That detainment from ICE officers at the border that doesn't show up when you did a FOIA request may show up, and I have heard those stories. So be prepared, as well as just want to tell the truth, um, and you want to talk to an attorney, again, to determine whether there's any red flags. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out to us. We're here to talk to you. You can set up an appointment. We can see how we can help you. Those are the four things that you can do in preparation for your immigration interview. If you master those four things, then hopefully you are successful and you can come out with uh, getting your green card um, in that situation or perhaps your uh, citizenship uh, 
application is approved on that same day.